This video will address the high school conceptual category of algebra and the particular uh, domain we're working with is arithmetic and polynomials and rational expressions. We're actually going to work with polynomials in this video um, as they are placed in rational expressions. And we're going to focus on rewriting rational expressions. Um, a rational expression, in fact, in this standard, it says rewrite simple rational expressions in different forms, and it goes on to basically define what forms. I didn't, I didn't write all that in because it, it just makes the standard really long here. Um, but what we're going to be looking at is, for example, something I might call like an algebraic uh, fraction. If we saw something like this, that's a, a quadratic over a you know, we have a binomial, x minus 3, this is, uh, it looks like a fraction, and it is a fraction. But um, because we have some variables in there, we don't really know exactly what this fraction is. Um, but we do see this as a rational expression, and we can, and we can read this as x squared minus 3x plus 2, this whole quantity divided by x minus 3, because a fraction such as like 3 fourths, can also be seen as 3 divided by 4. So we're going to be taking a look at how you actually would divide a rational expression using long division in the same way we learned how to do long division with integers or with whole numbers. <clears throat> so before we get into dividing with long division uh, some rational expressions, let me just do a quick review of how we would take, how we would look at a fraction like this, 629 divided by 5, or 629 fifths, they both represent the same value, but 629 divided by 5, if I were to rewrite it in a long division, in long division form, I know that 629 divided by 5 would get me 125, but I would also end up with a remainder because 125 times 5 would get me 625, and when I subtract the 2, I would end up with 4, which is my remainder. So with 4 as my remainder, I can write the answer to this long division problem in two ways. I could write it as 1. 125 and 4 fifths, or I could write it as 125 plus 4 fifths, which doesn't change the value, just two different ways to write it. Um, we have 125 and 4 fifths, that means 4 fifths more, and here is 125 plus 4 fifths more, it's the same value. But the reason why I'm um, talking about this in terms of whole numbers is I want you to see that this is the exact same thing. I mean, the way it's written is the way we'll end up writing um, the answers to our long division problems with the rational expressions. And so we'll see that in just a moment. Here's a rational expression. This particular rational expression <clears throat> is, um, is 3x squared plus 9x minus 3 divided by x plus 3, or over x plus 3. So I will, re I will write, rewrite this in long division form. So I would have <clears throat> x plus 3 divided by 3x squared plus 9x minus 3. And <clears throat> the... Um, it's, I, you know, I actually enjoy doing long division with rational expressions because I think it's a lot easier than doing long division with whole numbers and integers. Um, all I have to do is look at this first term and this first term. I need to think about what I need to multiply by that first term that would get me this first term. So this is an x, that's a 3x squared. I know that I would multiply 3x times x, I would get 3x squared. So 3x times x is 3x squared, and just like in regular long division, we would write the solution down below here. And now I would multiply this by the next term. 3x times 3 equals 9. And then I would subtract. And notice that I put the subtraction symbol out here. Um, when we're subtracting um, 
terms here that have a negative sign in it, it can get very confusing um, to keep track of how we're correctly subtracting the numbers. I keep it out here because I don't want it to get confused with this term um, and I want to make sure I'm clear what I'm subtracting. So in this case, 3x squared minus 3x squared, that's going to get me 0. 9x minus, sorry, I just realized I didn't put an x here, minus 9x would also get me 0. Okay, now I still have something left over, so I'm going to bring that down, and that gets me negative 3, and <clears throat> this is my remainder because there isn't anything I can multiply by x to get me negative 3. So this is going to be my remainder and so now I'll write the remainder as or I'll write the solution to this long division problem as 3x which is this number right here plus negative 3 over x plus 3. So this is written just like, let's circle this in yellow, this solution is written just like our um, division with um, whole numbers. We had 129 plus 4 fifths, and now we have 3x plus negative 3 over x plus 3. And all this is is just another way to rewrite this problem right here, this rational expression. There's just two different ways to write the same thing. Some people say this is a version of simplifying this. I'm not sure this is any in any simpler form. It's just basically another rewritten form. Okay, so what if we had 2x squared minus 11x minus 20 divided by 2x minus 3? So first of all, I'm going to rewrite this in long division form. And as these uh, expressions get a little bit longer and more complex, it's going to get harder to write on this pad, but we'll see how this works. So again, I only need to worry about this first term and this first term. What do I multiply by this term to get this term? So here I have 2x squared, here I have 2x. I know that if I can multiply just one more x by 2x, I would get 2x squared. So that was actually a pretty easy one. And now I just need to multiply this times the next term. So I have x times a negative 3. That's going to get me negative 3x. And here's where we have to start being careful about our signs. All right, so now I'm going to subtract, but I'm going to put this subtraction sign out here to keep track. That um, Here, 2x squared minus 2x squared, that's simple. That's going to get me 0. Now here's where it might get confusing. Negative 11x minus negative 3x. That's going to get me negative, uh, sorry, I'm writing this wrong. Um, this is going to get me a negative 8. This is going to get me a negative 8x, and now I need to bring down my next term, which in this case is negative 20. So I have negative 20 and can I multiply something by 2x to get me negative 8x? And the answer in this case is yes, so I actually can continue to another level. So I know that if I multiply 2x by 4, actually a negative 4, I will get negative 8x. So I'm going to put minus 4, and minus 4 times 2x equals negative 8x, so that's good. And negative 4 times a negative 3 is positive 12. And now when I go to subtract these terms, Again, these two will cancel each other out. 8x, negative 8x minus negative 8x is 0. And then negative 20 minus 12 will get me a negative 32. And now I have a leftover because there's nothing I can multiply to 2x to get me a negative 32. 
So I'm going to actually rewrite the answer um, here, the solution here, um, on a different page, and then we can compare it to that. Um, so, well, well, maybe I can do a different color on the side. So what we will, let's do, yeah, let's just do green. Okay, so now I know that So now I know that 2x squared minus 11x minus 20 divided by 2x minus 3, let's draw a line here so we can keep that separate, equals, another way to rewrite this entire rational expression is x minus 4, and I'm going to put parentheses around that to keep it straight, plus, and then my new fraction um, will be negative 3 over 2x minus 3. Now, if I can... And so on the next page, I have this rewritten so that we can see how this works. Here's the same original problem we had. 2x, minus, 2x squared minus 11x minus 20 divided by 2x minus 3 um, could be rewritten as x minus 4 plus a negative 3 over 2x plus 3. Again, these are just two different ways to write the same expression. And oftentimes, it is helpful to be able to rewrite a rational expression so that we can work with it in different ways, depending on what the context is of our problem solving.